on this episode, the box in. Hey everybody, this is The Quarter Show and we are talking about the box in. Not boxing, the box in. So, I don't know if anybody's familiar with this term or we just make up these terms over here or I not, but uh, I think we just make them up. But, you know, that's how we describe it. We, we describe, it's a part of closing, so, we, you know, one of our previous episodes, we talked about closing, the closing persona and things like that, but there's things that go with closing, with closing a sale that are really, really important. And we call it boxing in. And I think it has sort of a negative connotation to it when you think about it, like, oh my gosh, you're boxing people in. Um, but it doesn't, you know, it's, it's running good, tight control in your cycles. And um, so we, we look at it this way, when, when you're, when you're, you, you've actually done with the selling, selling stage and you're kind of into the closing, you're, you're, you're moving to, to get a deal closed, um, there are things, there are questions and statements and things that you need to do to, to box in the cycle. And, um, and that doesn't mean you have to manipulate or whatever, it just means that, you know, there's opportunities that come up and if they, if those opportunities go missed, if you miss the things that the prospect, um, they say something and you don't box in, you open up the opportunity to either have the deal be too loose, have the deal take too long, not close it, have the uh, chance of it kind of spinning out of control. And you don't want that. You want to run as tight control as you can when you're closing any deal, and certainly any business to business enterprise sale. Um, and so, you know, when we say box in, we say like, if a prospect, for example, is saying something like, um, Oh, you know, uh, yeah, send it over, and, and uh, yeah, we're, we're going to take a look at this, and we're going to get it signed off, as an example. And a lot of prospects, keep in mind, say very vague things. Very, they use generalities. They speak very vaguely often. Uh, they don't give you exact specifics. Um, this is not their fault. They just do it. A lot of prospects do this. People in business is just a pretty common thing. But it's up to you to clarify and to box in. And, we, and so as an example, you might say something like, yeah, no, I totally got it. Listen. Are you going to be the one that's actually signing off on this thing, or do I have to direct this over to uh, I see on the, on the site so and so, or John, or or um, or ultimately I, I'm going to send this contract over. I'm going to send it over via uh, our e-sign tool. Look, am I sending that directly over to you? And and ultimately, if you get green light over 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 there, are you the one that's actually going to initial off on this thing? And this is just a general, like I'm just giving you a general example, but you want to drill down you want to zero in and you want to walk away from every conversation where you have complete and utter clarity on any cycle. There cannot be anything that's vague or that's missing or that's general. The box in asks, asks pointed questions or has pointed statements in a way that drives complete clarity so you can sort of control and drill down. And the more control and the more drill down you get, um, the easier it is to, to close the cycle. And so. You, you almost want to work out a series of box-in questions or a series of box-in <clears throat> statements. Now, I know those for our own company. I, I don't know them per se for your company, and there's some general ones that you can use, but you need to have a series of five or ten different things that are that are the box-in statements or the box-in questions that help, um, that help isolate and help control to close the deal. Because every time you get off the phone or you get you know, out of a cycle or email or whatever, you need to have crystal clarity on the next immediate action step. And if you don't have clarity, you haven't done a good job boxing in. Yeah, and, and a lot of times it comes down to, you can look at different areas for yourself, but a lot of times it comes down to time, when certain things are gonna happen, yeah. people, who's gonna be involved, and any other logistics as to what's actually gonna happen. And it's a totally, it's a totally, un, uh, perhaps a natural thing, at least in, in some aspects of business, for people to be vague, whether it's intentional or not. Yeah. So it's going to happen. That's going to happen. <clears throat> and to the degree that, to the degree that it is vague, is the degree that you're on your heels and you don't have anything to do. Yeah. You'll 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 not have your own actions to take. So to the degree or or the right points to follow up, you'll be just like, let me cheerlead along. Where are my pom poms? Yeah. <clears throat> you'll be looking for your pom poms instead of like asking. 
So has Fred taken a look at it yet? Or then you follow up with Sally and you go, hey, this is probably on your desk now. I don't know if you had a chance to look, you know, et cetera. You can do different things. Or if I do X, Y, and Z, like, <clears throat> hey, so circling back on the conversation, if I do X, Y, and Z, as we discussed, and, and I changed the, the contract to, to reflect X, Y, and Z, if I get that si sent over to you, can we get this signed off in like, let's say next 15 minutes, or can we get it signed off today? If I, if I, if I fix those items, are you on board? Are you good with this? Are you on board? Can we get the sign off? And then you sense for trepidation. You sense for any other thing. If there's some trepidation, well, like, oh, yeah, I think. Oh, okay, good. Any other, you know, other questions like, now are you going to be the one that's actually going to initial off if we have green light or is there somebody else that has to be, you know, on board as well? And these are just examples. But but you, it, it's, it's constantly boxing in. And of course you're doing it in a tactful way. Of course you're doing it in a way where you're not trying to ruffle feathers. You're not t trying to be brash, but you do have to be efficient. Well, the, <clears throat> and the reason it ruffles feathers is largely 90% plus because if it'll only happen if there is something wrong. Yeah. At right where Fred or Sally or whoever the senior person doesn't actually know anything about this. You've sold that person, right? There's a lot of, there's a lot of things that can go on. Yeah. And so, so each of us as salespeople sometimes will be backed off from asking these questions because we're worried because about you know, what might get said. But it's an opportunity. <clears throat> Even if something happens, it gives you the opportunity, at least you have that information, and now you can go and get handled. Um, but often when you're getting vague information, you might have the wrong terminal, yeah. right? You might have the wrong person. They don't know, they don't have an answer, and you're just going in blind. And if you go with it, the probability and the chances of closing dramatically increase. And here you are with this like false hope, and you know, the truth is false hope doesn't close deals. You know, you, right. you get, you've got to know. And sometimes that means you've got to ask the tough questions and you've got to say the, the, the things that would be construed as awkward. And then you have to figure out how to say it in a way that is tactful, that is smooth. And all the while, so you're, you're, you're boxing in. And even if that means you're boxing in and the prospect, you find out the prospect is not the right person and they don't actually know, at least now you know. And you can you can repair any, any rapport with them if needed and now you know your next play and where you need to go to box that in. Yeah, and sometimes, <clears throat> and I've done it too, sometimes we don't say the awkward things because we just don't want to hear the thing that will that will be the letdown. We just wanna take this keg of dynamite that might, or gunpowder, that, yeah. that might be lit or might not be, and sort of let it go and, and, and roll it down the hill and hope it arrives. Right, just pray, like just, oh my gosh. I hope I this doesn't know. blow up before it gets there. I'm not gonna touch it yeah. anymore. But you know, that's not a great strategy for closing. It's like that old, book, I, I, you know, that hope is not a strategy. Um, it, it, it is, it is not a strategy, you know, and, and, and so when it comes to closing, you, you, you need to be a surgeon, you know, about it. And, and a surgeon would know absolutely everything, all the tools, everything that's going on, all the vitals, everything, because the data that you don't know is the data that kills you, you know? And so, you know, that's where the boxing comes in. And again, for your company, you need you to look and say, what, what are boxing questions? What are boxing statements for my product, for my service, for my offering? What, what are those boxing things? And for us, for example, we can, we can, you know, we did this the other day with our sales, when we had our sales muster with the team, it's like, I can just ask, good, let's give me, give me some boxing questions. Give me some boxing statements. And they know what those are. You say this, Good, this, this, good, this, good, this, good, you know, and, and they know it, you know, and the more that your team knows those box in things, the better the chance is that they're gonna get get the deals closed and get them pushed over. And the truth is if they're rusty on box in questions and then you're sitting there and deals aren't closing, you're scratching your head, you're wondering, there's a really good chance you have an out control point, you have lack of box in, uh, or they don't even, they're not even aware of box in at all. Okay, yeah. not boxing, box in. <laughs> uh, anyway, hope, hope that helps. Uh, that's all for tonight. This is episode 98. We got two more, com uh, one, one more coming, then we're at episode 100. Pretty exciting here. Looking forward to that. Yeah, looking forward to that. Fun. We're gonna have, working on some ideas there. Uh, but hope you enjoy this one. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. If you're not already, subscribe right there. And, and if you like it, hit the like and, and of course share on social. Okay, thanks.